Welcome to my office. It's small and it's cramped. There's no windows. It can get pretty dark in here when the lights are turned off. However, conditions in here are nothing compared to what Joseph Smith and his friends endured during their stay in the jail in Liberty, Missouri. The jail in Liberty, Missouri is one of the most sacred places on earth for members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. For five cold winter months, Joseph Smith and several of his close associates were confined within its thick walls. These were among the most trying times in the life of the prophet Joseph Smith. But in these harsh conditions, Joseph also received some of the most important and moving revelations now found in the Doctrine and Covenants. This led to one historian referring to Liberty Jail as a temple prison due to the profound revelations given to Joseph Smith while he was confined within its walls. But what exactly happened here? What were conditions like? And how does the experience in Liberty Jail show how God can assist us in our most trying times? Join me in the Book of Mormon Central video team as we not only visit these locations, but also attempt to reconstruct the prison in a 3D model to better visualize these profound lessons. Today, Liberty is a bustling suburb in the greater Kansas City area. After flying into Kansas City, I visit the Liberty Jail historic site and meet President and Sister Esplin. Welcome to the historic Liberty Jail. Thank you for having us. Well, We're we so appreciate you to coming here. to visit us today. Built in the 1960s, the historic Liberty Jail Visitor Center has a large dome that encloses a recreation of the jail that was partially built from the original materials of the jail. And this is the reconstruction of the jail. The only entrance to the jail was that uh, door we see on the opposite side there. It's actually a double door. As we get around to the other side, you'll see there's two doors. Well, the only entrance into the dungeon is that trap door in the middle of the jailer's quarters that went down into the dungeon area of the, of the jail. So the only light coming in through the jail is through these windows over here. And right, on the north and south sides, there's, there's two on the jailer level, two on the dungeon level and because of the location, very little direct light could get through there, but the, the cold winter wind, since they were uncovered, only covered by bars, the wind could get in there uh, unobstructed. And there's even rocks on top of the ceiling. I that's noticed, right, that's so right. That they can't get out that way. That's right. If somebody's tried to break out there, they'd hear the rocks clattering down, and like you say, they even put those broken up rocks in the ceiling, so if they tried to go through that way, they'd, they'd come crashing down as well. President Esplin was kind enough to allow me and a couple of my friends into the actual recreation. We feel privileged for this opportunity, and I can't help but think of how small the jail would be for Joseph Smith and his colleagues. Six men in here. Six men in there. For five months. There were six men part of the time and five men when they finally were released. Oh, wow. I step into the small jail and notice tight living conditions these men would have had to endure. In this basement dungeon, they would have slept on hay and blankets, being subject to the cold weather and who knows what else. Not a lot of room and not a lot of light, I'd imagine, coming in both sides That's here. Right. They were on the north and the south side, so very little direct light got into the jail. Oh, I can't imagine being in a space this small with that many people for that long a space of time. We climb up the main floor and into the room where they would have spent their daytime hours. For five months, mostly in the winter season, and while the saints were persecuted beyond these walls, they endured these tight living conditions. Uh, but the guard did say, occasionally I'd have to take them out of the jail and let them walk around because their eyes um, just really, really started to hurt because it was so dark inside the jail and they could never see. I mean, you can see how even in bright daylight, if you've only got light coming in from that side and light coming in from this side. But this is where Hiram meets his son, Joseph F., future president for the, church, first, for the time. first time. Yeah, they're brought in here, and Emma spends a, a night or two in the jail, as I understand it, too. Seeing the recreation of Liberty Jail in the Visitor Center was an overwhelming experience. And thanks to President Esplin, we got some good measurements and ideas to help us build our 3D model and better visualize Joseph's harrowing experience. But to further understand the dimensions and experience of the prisoners in the jail, I head back to Provo, Utah, and met with Alex Baugh, a professor of church history at Brigham Young University. Brother Baugh has conducted years of research to understand the conditions in Liberty Jail. Hi, Alex. 
Hi, Casey. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good to see you. Uh, we've we've come here to talk a little bit about Liberty Jail. Thanks for inviting me. This yeah. Is, this is something I really enjoy talking about, as you know. Yeah. Well, we're glad to, to have you help us out. Uh, let, let's talk about what you have. All right. So we, we visited the jail and saw the visitor center. It's beautiful. But we're trying to create a 3D model to help people understand what the jail would look like when Joseph Smith was there. So what are some things that uh, we need to include to make this as accurate as possible? Well, fortunately, we have a real rare photograph taken about in the 1870s, 1878, by a local photographer, and he took a wonderful picture of that. From that, we can discern a lot of things just by looking at it. Also, we've had some wonderful uh, early history done by a man by the name of Andrew Jensen. He's working for the historian's office, and he went on a fact-finding mission with a man by the name of Joseph S. Black, named after the prophet, and also Edward Stevenson. In 1888, he goes back there. They meet some people who actually were part of the jail experience, one being a man by the name of James Ford, who was one of the deputy sheriffs and jailers who actually guarded Joseph Smith. And so from some of this uh, kind of information uh, early on, we can piece together a few more things. I think, first of all, we have to look at the si overall size. And again, we have to thank uh, Andrew Jensen. And during this visit, he wrote down that it was uh, the outer portion of the jail that was remaining in 1888 was about 22 feet by 22 and a half feet. So roughly 22 feet square. And then the party was able to get into the jail itself. Uh, he said that the walls were actually four feet thick. So two feet of what we would say mortared limestone and then right with that was a foot of loose rock that was held in by a foot of timber or pylons. I don't know how to describe them. So basically a structure that was 22 by 22 and a half feet, but take off four feet around the walls. And it's basically a 14 and a half by 14 interior. At the top, in the top story was a window, an open window, if we want to call it that. It's about a foot and a half square. There were five bars that were perpendicular. And down below, the very lower chamber, there's another open window. And this is probably only about a foot or so by six inches. It's not very big, maybe a foot and a half. And downstairs, it looks like there was one horizontal bar. I think another th important thing is that door. And you know this as well as anyone, Casey. Yeah, yeah. yeah you actually measure that. Uh, that outside door is in the... Uh, it's in the Community of Christ Temple. Exactly. Down and, in and, Independence, yeah. And it's almost not quite five and a half feet by two and a half feet. But there was an interior door as well. So you had the one on the outside, the one on the inside, on the inside timber. So there was actually a double door entry. He also tried to measure the height, and he said the upper story was about seven feet, and the lower story was about six and a half feet. I think that's important because one of the prisoners was a man by the name of Alexander McRae. Some say he was about six feet four to six feet six, and there's this kind of lore, folklore, I don't know if you want to say it that way, where they say that he, they couldn't stand up in the, in the jail. Well, if Andrew Jensen's measurements are correct, and I think they are, seven feet on the top and six and a half feet on the bottom, he could probably stand up. In fact, in all of their remembrances or reminiscences or documents they created, no one ever said they couldn't stand up. And so I think that's kind of a misconception, a myth, if you will, that uh, the prisoners couldn't stand up. Well, they certainly could upstairs. Might have been a little tight downstairs. Now, where were they in the jail? There's two floors. Are they in the bottom floor or the upper floor? Andrew Jensen, in meeting with uh, James Ford, one of the deputy jailers, the jailer said they spent their, their daytime hours upstairs. They have visitors coming all the time. So that's where they would eat their meals and basically be there during the daytime. But at night, they would have been in the dungeon. And I think there's this misconception in the church. You go back to Liberty and you look at that model that you've seen, you think they're in the basement the whole time or the, the dungeon cell. But they only did that at night. That's why they say, and uh, Joseph Smith says that they were cold. They're always cold. They, they even tried to start some fires down there, but those windows are so small and there's no flue. Where would the, the smoke go? But they were very cold at night. There's just no question. But during the day, they would have uh, been upstairs. And it's interesting, I found a document 
uh, in the Clay County Historical Society that says they were getting a replacement stove for the jail in 1841. Jail was built in 1833, so that, that stove is worn out. <laughs> and uh, they're getting another stove. So I think there's there been this misconception that there was no heat upstairs, but there was. In the evening when they go down and they go through a trap door and were placed in the basement or the dungeon cell, uh, that's when it's cold. And they're just straw mattresses and you know they just have to stay as warm as they can. Alex and I discussed some more vital information about Liberty Jail, and now I feel like I have enough information to help the Book of Mormon Central video team begin our project to recreate the jail in a 3D model, and to better see how it would have looked in Joseph Smith's time. I'm on my way to the Book of Mormon Central building to meet with the video team. They are the best and brightest of all video teams. Wait, does the script really say that? I meet with Daniel Smith, who's brought to life many church history and Old Testament locations with 3D models and recreations, along with Benjamin Griffin. And zooming in is Elder Ducos, a talented service missionary working with Book of Mormon Central to create 3D models. I explain to them the things I've learned from Liberty Jail and Alex Baugh, and teach them in detail the dimensions of the building, the research involved, and how it's all connected. I think they understood it all. Do you get it? You get it? <laughs> This guy gets it. Although this is just a funny cutscene to represent building the model, the actual amount of work put into this is mind blowing. This took several months to create and rendering can take days. But with the model finally finished, I wanted to check back with Alex Baugh to get his impressions. So Elder Dukos and I returned to BYU to show him the model. Hi, Alex. Hi. Hey. I introduce Alex to Elder Dukos and then we take a seat to show him what we've created. We took some of the information that you gave us and Elder Ducos was able to put together a digital model to show what Liberty Jail would have looked like in 1838 to 39 when Joseph Smith and his friends were there. So this is a video that we put together of the, uh, of the jail and of the model that we made. So this right now is just a photograph of the jail. Yeah, that, now that's the uh, Hicks photograph. Moving up the stairs, this is where Joseph pauses and says, good afternoon, hey, everyone. Gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Opening and closing of the doors, that, that, that alone is, is very sensational. I mean, it just uh, really captures your emotions there. And I've seen the door, but those double doors, one closes after the other, and now you're, you're, in. you're in there. You, don't get a, you get a feel for the thickness of the walls. Now they would have had their dinner right there. They wouldn't have eaten downstairs. It would have been up here. Even during the daytime, it's gonna be pretty dark yeah. in here. And of course, the trap door probably in the center. We just don't know, but it seems the logical place for the trap door. I think that gives a real sense of feeling of enclosure, of darkness. Oh, it's, it's impressive. This is not a big, huge space. And you can imagine uh, six people uh, constantly, you know, in, in, in that space. That can be very, very disconcerting. I mean, you, there's something about not being allowed to go somewhere or not being allowed to, to move and operate. Six grown men in a space that small would really be a difficult thing. Yeah, psychologically, emotionally, uh, not that they didn't get along, but uh, we need our space. That, that really does, I think, depict a very uh, dramatic kind of an experience that, uh, again, none of us can comprehend, except if we were, you know, the actual individuals. But uh, that, that's very, very, I appreciate that very much. And I think that'll give us a little bit of better sense of uh, the, the kind of traumatic experience this was for Joseph Smith. Now, Alex, if you ever wanted to use this model in your class, uh, it's available for free on Book of Mormon Central's app, Scripture Plus. You just go to section 121, and down at the bottom, you can see historical settings. You click on that, and then it'll take you to a, a Google site, which will actually make the, the model available to you, and you can tap and, and move around inside it, just like you're walking around inside Liberty Jail. And you can also go between floors by clicking on the little buttons over here on the side of the screen that bring you to the different floors in the building. 
That is so impressive. Yeah, that's really I, nice. I really, really think this is a wonderful contribution to help our our members of the church and others uh, understand a little bit more about the Liberty Jail experience. Yeah. We leave gaining a deeper understanding of the living conditions Joseph would have faced in Liberty Jail. For months, they endured the extreme cold and pain, knowing their people were suffering. In the prison, Joseph yearned and begged God for help. The Lord would then offer one of the most sacred revelations now canonized in the Doctrine and Covenants. My son, peace be unto thy soul. Thine adversity and thine affliction shall be but a small moment, and then if thou endure it well, God shall exalt thee on high. While the prison wall stopped physical objects from entering the building, it could not stop the spirit from entering the walls and teaching Joseph Smith. In this sense, Liberty Jail was a temple, a place where God gives revelation and comfort. Today, less than 15 minutes away from Liberty Jail, stands the Kansas City, Missouri Temple, a genuine authorized dedicated temple of the Lord. But Joseph Smith's experiences in Liberty Jail really teach us that any place can be a temple. A temple doesn't have to be a specially dedicated building, that a temple is anywhere God speaks to us. The temples are places where God gives us comfort, and any place that he shows us help in the midst of our trials can be a temple. And that even in the darkest and most harrowing moments of our lives, the Lord can give us comfort and peace, just like he did to Joseph Smith.